Hi, I'm Dr. Marty Klein. This week's quickie is about a young man who came to me for a consultation a few months ago. He's 20 years old. He's had sex with two different women so far. He says it was okay, but he says, I didn't feel confident. I wasn't sure if they had an orgasm or if I'm doing everything right. Raul wants some advice right away. Some coaching, he says, some coaching from someone who knows all about women and all about sex. And um, so instead of seeing him myself, I sent him to a colleague of mine, a Dr. S, who is 30 years younger than I am and female. While I generally think that a therapist's gender is irrelevant, I want this young man to have the experience of talking with a woman about sex. Now, while Dr. S is experienced and skillful, her femaleness and her relaxation about sexuality just could be the most important aspect of that conversation. What she says will be accurate and relevant, but I don't want to just give men like Raul a fish. Uh, I want them to learn how to fish. And so how is he going to have more sophisticated conversations as success sex life gets more complicated? How will he deal with unfamiliar information when he meets a woman with interests that he's never encountered before? It makes me sad to think that people are having sex when they feel inhibited about talking with their partner. And this isn't just the province of young people. Plenty of couples married 20 years still don't undress in front of each other. They still fake orgasm. They still can't say less teeth, please, or slow down, please, or I'd like way more kissing before intercourse, please. When people and couples feel sexually inhibited, the frequency of the sex typically declines. But I see a lot of single people who are either hooking up or dating, periodically having sex with a new person, and apparently many single people of all ages are choosing to have sex when they don't know the person very well or when they don't assume that the person will be gentle about a vulnerability. And so we have the odd spectacle of people taking off their clothes and getting inside each other's bodies when they don't fully trust each other. It's like eating dinner at a stranger's house and insisting that the host try every dish first in case he's poisoning you, or refusing to go into the bank to withdraw some money because you're afraid the tellers will laugh at how little money you've saved. A few subcultures here in America insist that people be married before they have sex. Other subcultures have relented on the virginity thing as long as a couple is in love and seems serious. For better or worse, both of these milestones are stand-ins for time and trust. But that's neither necessary nor sufficient, depending on the situation. The real criterion for being ready for sex with somebody shouldn't be if you're in love, or married, or know each other a certain amount of time. No, it should be, are you ready to talk about your discomfort with the size of your penis or the size of your breasts? It should be, do you have good reason to believe that this person will be gentle and friendly if you lose your erection or you don't lubricate? An even stronger metric would be, are you pretty sure that if the sex or the relationship don't work out, this person will behave well? In the past, Cultures have had surrogates for these levels of trust, marriage, years long courtship, families who know and respect each other, people coming from similar backgrounds with similar values. But in many parts of the world, this is disappearing or it's already gone. Young or older, many people feel more autonomy about when and with whom to be sexual. So shared values can't be assumed. Good character can't be assumed and empathy and trust can't be assumed. So more than ever, people now have a choice. Wait to have sex with someone until you trust them or have sex with someone before trust is established. Especially for people who are not entirely comfortable with their own sexuality, communication is easier in the first situation. It's not a matter of morality. It's a practical matter of how you make decisions. So from a practical perspective, everyone should understand how much trust contributes to a satisfying sexual experience and an enjoyable sexual relationship. That used to be a standard cultural norm. Trust someone before having sex with them. Now, a lot of people think it isn't cool to want to trust a potential sex partner. So a few people have even created a sexual orientation, demisexual, 
That means I need to trust someone in order to be aroused. Now, to be clear, there's nothing wrong with needing to trust someone in order to be aroused. And so generation after generation of people now have sexual experiences and a self-image that's unnecessarily truncated because it never occurred to them that trust, relaxation, and self-acceptance were crucial to enjoying sex. Sooner or later, we all discover that we're demisexual, which is simply another word for being human. I'm Dr. Marty Klein. Thanks for joining me today.